we're going on a bus. Uh, I can't remember this bus's name. I feel like it's either Oscar or Gus, one of those. It's a big blue bus. It's got a nice fun stripe down the side too and some, some pinstriping here and there. It also smells awful, awful, terrible, dreadful, disgusting. It's awful, but it's very, very solid. Um, basically, all we're going to do is make it run and drive and stop. And one of the first things I have to do is um, fix uh, this metal missing bit here, uh, which means the engine has to come out. And if the engine's coming out, I am certainly going to replace the fuel sending unit, uh, whether it's good or not, because the engine has to come out to do that anyway. And I'd really have to, I'd really hate to have to do it a second time. So let's pull the motor out of a bus. <laughs> I think one of the first things I'm going to do to make this a little bit easier is actually take the carburetor off um, just to get some more clearance out of it. Uh, something I do like doing with the Type 4s is uh, also dropping the transmission at the same time potentially because it's such a pain in the ass to get those hangers off the frame um, or to get the mustache bar out of the hangers. So. I think I'm just going to try to drop everything all at the same time. Um, so uh, I'm going to undo the axles. This is very similar to when I did uh, my bus, except I'm doing it all in one unit. So I've got to detach. I've got to detach the um, the uh, the drive axles from the gearbox. These guys right up here, and then uh, you know the shift rod and the nose cone and then i gotta get these guys off and yada 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 so uh let me uh i guess we'll montage it and or maybe not maybe you know what we'll just we're just gonna skip to the motor coming out i'm just gonna do a little bit of little bit of this okay all right, we're just gonna do a little bit of, okay. All right, that was just to clear the uh, the hockey stick off the frame. So I should be able to go down a little bit here. Ooh. Okay, I have to straighten that one out now. I'm sure this actually does look like I'm struggling, but this is so much easier than trying to pull the engine out individually. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let me kind of rearrange some things so I can get the engine on a stand. And then once I have that, uh, we'll get in the engine bay and take a peek at some stuff. Oh. We'll be fixing this. Mounts are trash. Anyway, it's several days later now. Um, I've, uh, I've already fixed the metal work in here that needed to be done. Uh, and now I can focus on the engine. Um, like I was just saying, the motor mounts are something we have to do. I also want to pull all the tins off and make sure there's no critter nests in there. Um, make sure it has as much airflow as possible. Um, I've got to see if the thermostat works. I don't even remember if it has a thermostat. Nope, that thermostat has failed, so we're going to need one of those. Um, but I can at least run the new cable in the meantime. Um, ma 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 Yeah, so I've got a lot. Oh, I want to do the uh, oil cooler seals as well. So pretty much have to tear this down to a long block. I think that also means that I have to pull the exhaust off. So um, let me uh, start pulling this apart and when we get ready to throw parts on, I'll uh, bring you back in here.
Okay, I've got the uh, backside of the fan shroud off, which leaves me with this. So this guy here is your oil cooler on the Type 4s. Um, it is basically the same as uh, Doghouse Type 1. It's just a little bit wider. Um, so, because a lot of guys will actually put these on uh, Type 1 engines, they'll make the um, the doghouse uh, section of the fan shroud a little bit wider, wider to accommodate these. Uh, so I'm going to uh, pull these uh, nuts off here, and hopefully this will just like that. I'll uh, you know clean it up, put uh, new seals on the back of it, and slap it back on. And then we can do the mounts on the bar and uh, start putting this all back together, or at least as much as we can, because like I said, I still need to get bolts for that. So. Uh, little baby tiny bits of progress, I guess. Um, so let me uh, let me start getting this guy off and uh, we'll keep moving. All right, all these bolts here on the back should be tins. And I'm hoping that all this comes apart easy and without mess. It looks like this is pulling the stud out. Nope. Come on. There we go. So these seals. On the back of this is what I'm replacing because after these sit for a while they get really hard and they don't seal very well and these are pretty hard but at least someone sealed them in here when they uh, when they put them in I'm trying to at least this doesn't look like it's too caked up with stuff um, so that's good but all right, I'm gonna get uh, some new seals, kind of glue them in place here, and then uh, slap this back in. I did my best to to clean this guy up. I'm just gonna take a little tiny baby bit of RTV. Just get right in that radius there. Okay, I'm going to do the motor mounts now because those are broken. So what happened was there are these plates that the rubbers are glued to and uh, those plates just let go because the rubbers are still attached to those. So I just got new ones and the, uh, the long, the both mounts are the same. They just have to be put on in different orientations. Um, the long bolts face down and you want them to be in a way do the long bolts go yeah they should right they need to go they need to go straight straight down like that but i guess i'm taking at least one of these off it's got to be the one that I don't have access to once everything's back together. Alright, so we're just going to loosen that guy. And then we'll take this one out. Now that that's all back together, we've done the oil cooler seals and the motor mounts. Um, I want to do, I need to order a thermostat because the one that's on here has failed. And I want to wait to put the fan shroud back together until I have that and another bolt for the fan. Um, so I might just leave this be and work on some other things. Um, so when I get back on this, I'll bring you guys uh, back in. Oof. 
that's another day. I've got to get the fuel tank out of here. Um, and whether you like it or not, the engine has to come out to do that. Um, at a minimum, you have to lower it. Uh, if you're going to lower the engine, I suggest disconnecting the shift, shift coupler from the transmission. So if you don't, you can ruin it. So in order to get this panel out, there are one, two, three, four, five, six screws. I vaguely remember there being two bolts through the bottom, but I'm wondering if someone has already had this off and, uh, and didn't put them back in because I'm not seeing them. So let's just try these and see what happens. It does appear that there are likely some on the bottom, so now I've got to get a flashlight and probably a 13 socket. Ow. Oh, no, that's a flathead. Okay. I mean, a, a Phillips head. And then there's another one over there. Now, why are you stuck up there? Go. Any critters? Nothing yet. Okay, so next thing, I've got to get these straps off of here. And figure out how to get that mangy ass filler neck off. So these straps, there's two of them. Um, they come down to some long bolts underneath here on this uh, cross member, uh, and they should be 13s. Um, I'm going to put some vice grips on the ends of these so it doesn't spin too hard, and then I'm just going to get an impact and zip the thing off. Um, and hope for the best. Don't forget to take your uh, ground wire for your sending unit off as well. I don't know if you can see. Boop. That guy right there. That's what I've got to get off of that. And then all of this crap here. Don't forget to take your uh, sending unit ground wire off as well. Um, so let me uh, work on finagling this whole thing out and I'll let you enjoy watching me struggle to do that. Okay, so now, before this thing comes off the stands, come on. God. Okay. I'll let you know when I get this out. Oh, great. I thought I had. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Okay. Come on. Where's that wire there? God, it sucked. Okay. Tank's out. All kinds of crap in there, but at least the floor's still solid. So I'll vacuum this out. I'll probably replace that, uh, that Philonic hose. Um, I got to clean the tank up, see how the inside looks. Um, can't forget to reattach this wire when it goes back in, because that's what uh, goes up to the... Um, the gauge. Uh, there is a way you can test the gauge as well. Um, basically, you know, as long as there there's a battery in it and power going up to the front, if you touch the 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 ground wire that's still in there to ground, the the gauge should go straight to full. And as long as it does that, then everything up front is working. Um, so I'm going to test that once I get this ready to go back in. Um, and then uh, see where that goes. So let me uh, let me uh, vacuum all this out and see how it looks. God, what what a mess! All right, so I've got the tank out. Um, 
It's disgusting. I'm, uh, I've recommended to the owner of Oscar that uh, we just replace the tank. Uh, the cost of me cleaning it out um, or the cost of leaving it, praying, and then have to pull everything apart a second time to replace it, you might as well just get a new one now. Thankfully, they are available via Wolfsburg West. So I'm going to wait uh, until he tells me what he wants to do about that. In the meantime, um, I'm going to do pushrod tube seals on the motor, as well as uh, there's some metal work on um, on the uh, the firewall that I've got to do because somebody somebody started cutting it up pretty bad up there in the corner. So I'm going to have to fix that. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to do first. Uh, probably engine stuff because I hate making a whole bunch of noise before lunch. So let me, uh, let me set up the shop to do that, do some cleaning here, because pulling that out made a mess. Um, and then when I'm getting ready to do that, I'll, uh, uh, I'll uh, you know, get you in to do the, uh, the thing. Probably do a uh, valve adjustment in there uh, while I'm doing that, since I've got to take the rocker arms off anyway. So uh, shall we? We're going to do push rod tube seals. And they're a little bit easier than doing uh, type 1 because you don't have to pull the cylinder heads off which is very nice. So I'm going to remove the valve cover and then I believe these are 12s. They're 11s. Great, didn't grab one of those. 11. 11. Nice. Okay. So you're going to remove both rock arm assemblies. There's a uh, retaining wire in the bottom that puts pressure on the tubes so that those don't pop out. So we're going to just yank these puppies and these should just kind of lift off. Sometimes you got to squeeze the ends a little bit because they're spring loaded. Okay. And then that comes off like that. That was on the right side. So I'm going to set that off like that. This guy will go next to it, and then uh, spring beneath it, and then we'll take the pushrod tubes, or push rods out rather. And that one's got a little stuck. So I like to use one of these guys. Um, I'm going to pull one and then I'll move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is a spark plug boot plier thing. Um, I like to just get around the tube with it and grab it very gently. Grab it very gently. Grab it very gently. And then just kind of gently pry against the, the body of the engine. And then the tube comes right out like that. Just gonna, oh, this is gonna be a little bit more difficult because that's in the way. So I'm just gonna gently pop it out like that. I've got all the tubes out. Um, I've gotta pull the seals off of these. Uh, I'll clean these up. Um, they should be zinc plated, so I don't think I'm going to really need to paint them, but I may anyway. Um, and then actually, um, it's a good idea to kind of file around the, uh, the bores on the heads uh, where these go through because the machining is so sharp that it can actually tear the pushrod seals, uh, the tube seals when they're going in. Um, so I'm going to clean these up, I'm going to clean the head, I'm going to clean the case, um, and then, uh, you know, clean and paint these, uh, add some sealant. Um, and then uh, when I file those, uh, what I was just talking about, I'll show you that, and then we can. Uh, get these back in and I'll do the other side as well. Um, I think lunch first. All right, I've got the tubes cleaned up as best as I can, which means now I've got to kind of take the edge off the inside of here. And I'm not sure yet what file I want to use. So I've got to find, sometimes I use a round file. Sometimes I use like a domed file that'll I think that'll do that'll that'll be good 
So I'm going to use uh, this guy here, and it's got, come on, focus. It's got a little bit of a rounded top to it. It should do the inside of this very well. So there's obviously this, this outer raised portion here, but it's the next radius down that can be a little, uh, a little sharp. And honestly, now that I've cleaned this all up, this actually feels pretty good. So I'll, I'm going to take a couple of precautionary passes over this edge on the inside with the file just to be sure, and then we can uh, we can start trying to get this guy in here. So we're just going to do a little bit like that. All right. So we've got uh, the tubes here. I've got them cleaned up as best I can. There's a large end and a small end, and they have two different size O-rings. Um, I'm going to take a little bit of a tiny, tiny little baby bit of RTV all the way around the inside of this. And then we'll... Now I'm actually going to do the same thing and just kind of dress the outside of that seal. Okay. Put the little guy, the little end, in through here, just like you did when you took it out. Okay. Make sure you've got that lined up well. Sometimes you can use a socket to kind of steer it where it wants to go. Keep some pressure on it. I'm going to hammer and just... Until she seats. So that's two. I'm going to do the other two um, and then see how far I get today. Um, I might wait until tomorrow to do the valves. So let me uh, let me do what I'm doing and we'll figure out what's next. All right, I've got all the tubes in, um, which means I can start reassembling the valve train. Um, but I'm kind of out of time for today, this week really, uh, to film all of that. So I'm going to end the episode here and then next time we're going to talk about setting the valves and putting the valve train back together and then we can move on to the next thing. Basically the issue is that I'm missing a whole bunch of parts and I've got to order parts before I can do other things. So thank you very much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, leave a like, leave a comment, share with your friends, and we'll see you at the next one.